our new uh, organization, AIT Bioscience, is uh, a bioanalytical CRO. Uh, we're based on primarily four legs of a stool. We have experienced method developers that have been in pharma and, and other CROs for average uh, time in the business, about 15 years. Uh, we have a el fully electronic uh, CRO operation. There are no paper forms. We went to an electronic lab notebook. And uh, we also use Watson with the TSQ module running the Vantage. So again, that lends itself to a totally electronic laboratory. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the fourth leg, which is robotics. Uh, one of our employees with kids thought the title for my talk should be My Hamilton Can Beat Your Analyst, and <laughs> we're uh, passing out bumper stickers afterwards. So, uh, What we're trying to do, having done this sort of work in the past, is, is figure out ways to design out as much as possible the errors that show up when people do good work, but things still creep into the process. And uh, one of the things the ELN gave us was barcoding of everything, barcoding of QCs, validation samples, uh, mobile phases, instruments, and all the rest. But there's still this robotics side that we wanted to investigate past TomTech-type robotics, which is basically have the machine do the work from the start, have it do the spike, make the curve, aliquot the samples. And to do that, we... Um, we needed to do some standardization here on how methods are structured. So we decided, tell us what the lower limit of quantitation needs to be. We'll give you three orders of magnitude and let the robot do the rest. So if you look at that, here's a typical calibration curve where we go from five picograms per mil at the bottom here uh, on up to five nanograms per mil. That curve meets the guidance, eight calibrators in duplicate, three QCs, uh, QC in every decade of the curve. And if you can fixate that decision right there, you save yourselves a lot of interchangeable inter variation between methods. So when we, we started looking at that, then we looked at how we could automate that. We picked the star. A lot of pharma have the star system from Hamilton. I don't have any Hamilton stock, but the thing works extremely well. Um, we, have a sample, we have a deck with 12 pipetters, 96 head. Uh, the samples sitting there at the bottom can all be read, so you have this ultimate tracking of the entire process from the samples coming in through Watson, the samples getting aliquoted to plates, and so forth. So a little too much detail here, but if you look at what the various players do, you've got a principal investigator up here that disseminates a study, sits it into Watson, uh, we have to do a little work on that file to get it ready for the Hamilton in, in terms of deck locations. And then uh, the samples are loaded on the deck, and we'll take the spiking solution and the raw matrix, and that's it, and let the machine build everything from that point on. So we have some videos here, which I'm going to skip in the interest of time, but you can see the setup with samples and some work areas to make the curve and, and do the entire uh, extraction. I think this one, um, how do I get the mouse inside there? Can you click on that? But basically there's a little bit of a, little bit of a video here where we've, we have built the working solutions here. We've built the calibrators and matrix here, all from blank plasma and a single tube. And now we're, we're loading those samples into the plate. Uh, fantastic uh, simplification. A 30-minute job on the robot that was subject to uh, more time spent by the analysts. And possibly, while they're thinking about volleyball game that night, they turned two tubes around. The Hamilton is not worried about that too much. Next slide. I think if you click outside the white, you can go on. So what really got us going about this is not the gimmick of automation, but the quality of the results. And so here's a curve that went from 5 nanograms to 5 picograms per mil. This curve was made by the robot. And you can look at the theoretical deviations from the mean, and all of these are within about a percent of 100%. <coughs> you look at QCs made uh, pipetted on the machine from a... Uh, QC vial, the CV at a 15 picogram per mil is 
That was the worst case. So it looks fantastic. Um, if we now say, you know, that's a small batch, we spent a little time working on that at 9 o'clock in the morning. At 9.30, we want to go do another assay. If you standardize some of these things, you can avoid, um, and we'll get to this, <laughs> we'll get to the second assay, which is exactly the same setup, exactly the same, <laughs> exactly the same setup, 2,000 times higher concentration range, the same quality of data. So interesting thing about what a robot can do for you.